Is there less sincerity in nature during her gambols in spring than during the stiffness and harshness of her wintry gloom? Does not the bird's blithe caroling come from the heart quite as much as the quadruped's monotonous cry? And is it then altogether impossible to take up one's abode with truth and to let all sweet homely feelings grow about it and cluster around it and to smile upon it as on a kind father or mother and to sport with it and hold light and merry talk with it as with a loved brother or sister and to fondle it play with it as with a little child? No otherwise did Socrates and Plato commune with truth. No otherwise Cervantes and Shakespeare. This playfulness of truth is beautifully represented by Lander in the conversation between Marcus Cicero and his brother in an allegory which has the voice and the spirit of Plato. On the other hand, the outcries of those who exclaim against every sound more lively than a bray or a bleat as derogatory to truth are often prompted not so much by their deep feeling of the dignity of the truth in question as of the dignity of the person by whom that truth is maintained. It is our vanity, our self-conceit, that makes us so sore and irritable. To a grave argument we may reply gravely and fancy that we have the best of it. But he who is too dull or too angry to smile cannot answer a smile except by fretting and fuming.